In today's HealthCast, we're taking a closer look at a speech disorder that affects some more than 70 million people worldwide, including our president. We're talking about stuttering. And Dr. Rachel Williams with NSU's Department of Speech and Language Pathology says new research is shedding a lot of light on potential factors surrounding why we stutter. That has led to progress in the treatment and prevention of stuttering in young children. We look at what we consider to be the frequency of stuttering or how much stuttering do they do. And therapy usually involves trying to make sure that we decrease that number by increasing their ability to be fluent. So trying to alleviate them completely doesn't always happen. What we do too is decrease how much it happens in their communication skills. So Dr. Williams says one of the biggest myths about stuttering is that people who have this disorder are not as intelligent as those who don't stutter. And May, by the way, is designated Better Speech and Hearing Month in an effort to increase awareness about a variety of communication disorders. And another study published in JAMA uh, Open Network found that elevated anxiety, depression, and stress during pregnancy can affect a toddler's cognitive development. This is the first study to shed light on the impact of toxic stress levels during pregnancies and fetal brain development. And researchers at the University of Copenhagen are zeroing in on why some people experience high levels of daytime sleepiness. The scientists found that a small molecule in our brain cells affects the level of something called hypocretin, which is responsible for making us feel awake during the day and then tired at night. And people who have a genetic variation of this particular little molecule have a higher risk of suffering from daytime sleepiness.